Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video we're again advancing upon our third person shooter minigame. In today's video we're going to be adding in an aim offset so we can aim up and down instead of just straight on. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see if we hold right mouse button to aim we can now aim up and down as well so we can move like this whereas instead it was just forward like this. Now you see my back kind of, is kind of rotating a little weirdly that's just because I could very quickly set this up just to show you it working whereas you can obviously go into a lot more detail when creating these animations and obviously it allows you to then shoot up shoot down and shoot straight forward as well so you can see we have some enemies up here which we can actually damage now obviously the way I've got this certain animation set up with the camera zoom you can't see too well what you're doing so you might want to add in maybe another camera for when you're aiming off to the side or something but as you can see we can shoot up aiming up there to get this to work. So this is what we're going to make today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up the animations for us to actually be able to use in this aim offset. So to do that, I'm also going to be going into my anim start pack, which is the animations we're using for this project. So I'm going to open that up here, and then what I'm going to do is, in some empty space, I'm going to right click, go to animation, and create an anim offset 1D and this is going to be to the skeleton which we are using for our animations which for me is the UE4 mannequin skeleton with the path of game anim start pack UE4 mannequin so hit that one there and I'm going to name this one AO for aim offset and then ADS so AO ADS name it whatever you like but that's what I'm going to name mine and we're going to open it up straight away you can see in here it kind of looks a little bit like a blend space so we have different values and we can go to the asset details as well to set up the horizontal axes so what we want the horizontal axis to be is going from down to up. So 0 is all the way down, 100 is all the way up. So what we're going to do is change the name to be pitch because that is obviously our up and down values. And the player is going to go from minus 90 up to 90. So not 0 to 100, minus 90 is the minimum and 90 is the maximum. Because obviously that is in your right angle angles so they can aim all the way down and all the way up. So it kind of rotates a little bit like that. And we're also going to change the additive settings on the preview base pose to be our normal idle aiming. So I'm doing this when I'm aiming, so when I'm holding our right mouse button. So I want this to be idle rifle ADS, I believe it's called, or idle rifle iron sights. And if we were to hit save, we now have that as our preview base pose in the additive settings. But now we also want to set up all the other values which we want to input onto here, i.e. aiming down, aiming straight forward, and aiming up. So let's minimize this and set those up now. So what I'm going to be doing to create these is just modifying one animation which we already have, which is going to be this preview base pose here. So I'm going to hit the magnifying glass here to take me to that in the content browser. You can see we have it here. I'm going to right click this, duplicate it, naming this one AO aim forward. So I now have AO aim forward and I'm going to open it up like this. You can see this is what we have. So we have our animation for just aiming straight ahead and straight forward like this, not up, not down. However, we don't want this to actually be an animation like this. We want it to just be a single frame pose, so it's not going to be moving like this. So a simple way to do that is drag this all the way back to the start, right click on the timeline and just remove frame 39 to 190. I can do it again, remove frame 9 to 39. So just keep doing that until you remove all of the frames until you have one frame left like so. So when you hit play, it should look something like this and not be moving at all. And in here, we want to do the additive settings again. So under additive settings, we're going to change additive anim type to be mesh space. And then the base pose type is going to be selected animation. And the selected animation is going to be, again, our normal idle rifle animation we set up earlier. So idle rifle iron sights like so. And then we can hit save. And this is now set up to be our normal aiming forward animation which we have here. So I'm going to close that, right click on it and duplicate it again so that we don't have to set up all the removing frames and the additive settings and all that stuff. And I'm going to name this one AO underscore aim up. So we have aim forward and now aim up like so. So again we have the additive settings set up and it's just one frame. We want to modify this animation so it's looking up. So very simply we can hit the skeleton tree here and then select the spine because that's where we want to rotate it and we're just going to rotate it so it is now aiming up. So if we do look here we can now move this so again this is how the player is going to move. 
So this is how I did it earlier, just a very quick and simple one like so. So however far you want the player to be able to aim up is how far you'd rotate this. So I think that's going to be good for me. You obviously see it's kind of a little bit at an angle like so. So you could also then maybe rotate it a little bit like this as well if you wanted. So they're going to look a little bit more like that. Obviously set it up to be how you want and get into as much detail as you want as well. But for me this is going to be fine just for the purpose of the tutorial. And I'm not really an animator but this is going to work well for us. So then what we're going to do is hit save and this should now be good for us. And then we also need to select our spine sorry. So select spine or just anything which you have moved. Then hit key and hit apply and then hit save. And now that I saved this animation as it is like so. So if we were to close this and reopen it we are now still looking up like this. So this is our, our aim pose for looking up. And we're going to do the same thing again for looking down. So right click AO aim forward, duplicate this, name it AO aim down and again do the exact same thing we just did. So pause this, select the spine and just make it so they are now aiming down. Again as far down as you want them to be able to look and be able to aim. Again all personal preference for you of how much you want to customize this. But again I think for me this is going to be fine. So maybe something a little bit like that is good for me. So again key apply, save, close this, reopen it, and that has worked perfectly. So we now have our animations for aiming down, aiming straight forward, and aiming up. We just need to put these into our aim offset now. And that is very simple, again it's the same way we do it for a blend space. So let's open up our AO ADS here, and what I'm going to do first is drag in AO aim forward, and put that into the middle one here, and you can see we're now aiming forward. Drag in AO aim down, and drag that all the way to the left hand side, and AO aim up all the way to the right hand side. So minus 90 is down, 0 is middle, 90 is up. And if we were to hold down left shift and move our mouse, we can move this little green dot here. If we go all the way to the left, we're aiming down, all the way to the right, we're aiming up. So you can see here, this is how the player is going to move between aiming up, down and straight forward. So it's kind of moving a little bit odd for me, because again, I've just done it very quickly, I've not paid too much attention to the detail of it, I've just got it set up and working. So you can change this to get it looking a little bit different for you if you'd like. Again, this is going to work perfectly fine for me. I'm going to hit save and close that like so because now we need to set this up in our animation blueprint. So open up your animation blueprint which you have for your character, which for me is the UE4 ASP Hero TPP Anim Blueprint here like so. And we're going to go into our anim graph which is here. So for me that's the anim graph state machine and previously we set up this aim state which we have here. We're going to double click to open that up and just modify this ever so slightly. So at the moment we have just our normal blend space. We're going to disconnect that and in front of it put our aim offset ADS that we have here. The base pose can now be that blend space we have here though. So what it's going to do is it will still use this blend space for our walking forward and just idle animations which we have. But it's also going to be using this aim offset as well perfectly. The alpha we can leave as it is as one. But the pitch, we do need to actually set this up and figure out what the player's current pitch is. And this is actually a very easy way of doing this. So we're going to go over to our event graph to set this up. Again, this is all the code which you should have in here already. And we're going to add another pin onto this sequence here which we're using to set all of these different values to be able to use in our animation blueprint. And just underneath the rest of this code, what I'm going to do is right click and try get pawn owner. So it's going to get the owning pawn which is the player. And out of the return value of this, we're going to find out the rotation of the player. And that's not get actor rotation, we want to find out where they are aiming. So the rotation of their aim, so we can get base aim rotation. So again, this is going to figure out where the player is looking, so which direction their mouse is pointed or their camera. So again, essentially where they are aiming. And then we're going to right click the return value, split the structure pin. And so now we have the X, the Y and the Z. The Y obviously being the one we want because that is the pitch, so that's up and down. So I'm going to come out of the pitch here and get a greater than or equal to float. So a float is greater than or equal to a float, putting this as 180. I'll tell you why we're doing that in a second. And this is going to go into a branch with that obviously being the condition and the branch coming out of then three of this sequence which we've just set up up here. And now off of true, we want to set a value of pitch. So we hit the plus variable naming this pitch and we're going to make this a float value like so. And we're going to set that off of true but we're also going to set it off of false here. 
Now off of false, we're setting pitch. We can set that just to the normal pitch value here. But true, we want to get pitch and then minus a float. So float minus float. And we're going to minus 360, then connecting that into the set pitch like so. So the reason we're doing this is just because we want it to be from minus 90 to 90. So if it's over 180, instead of keeping it as 180, we want to flip it to be 360 minus 180, which is then going to go between 0 and minus 90. Otherwise, it will be between 0 and 90, which is again obviously what we want to have. So this is just why we're doing it this way. It just makes setting up the anim offset a little bit easier because we can use better values instead of having to go all the way like this. So it just makes it a lot more efficient to do. And we're going to compile, save, go back to this aim state we have here, input the pitch in there, and this should be it now all working perfectly for us. So we can compile, save, hit play, and with right click, we can now aim up and aim down and aim straight forward like so. So we've now set up the aim offset to be aiming properly like this. However, you'll notice if we were to look up and shoot, you can't really see, but the bullet is still just going to go straight forward as if we were shooting like this. So we need to change how that works. So we can close the animation blueprint, and now we're going to open up our character blueprint instead, or wherever you have the code for shooting your bullet. And we're going to go to that code here of shooting the gun, and we need to change this little section here of the make transform and the rotation. Because the moment it's getting the rotation on the Z value, so which way we are facing, i.e. left and right, but it's not going to get the rotation of which we're facing up and down. So we can do this a very similar way, or pretty much the exact same way that we did it in the animation blueprint. We can right click and get base aim rotation, right click return value and split the structure pin, and then just use the Y or the pitch as the pitch of the direction the bullet should go in. So again, very, very simple and efficient way of doing it. So let me disconnect this from the rotation, right click the return value and split the structure pin, because we want to use the Z value from the make rot from Z and the Y value from the get base aim rotation. Because again, this is for left and right, this is for up and down. So that is how we're going to decide which direction the bullet should be traveling in. So we're going to come out of rotation and get a make rotator. The X or the roll can stay at zero. The Y pitch will go in as the Y pitch of the get base aim rotation. And the Z yaw will go into the Z yaw of the make rot from Z, like so. Compile, save. And one other thing I want to do, so we can close this, is make it so the bullet doesn't have any drop to it. So I'm going to go to Game Files, Bullet, and open up my Bullet BP here. Now you might not want to do this, it's a personal preference and up to you. I'm just doing it because this is a mini game, it's not really meant to be realistic. I just think, personally, in this scenario, it will be a little bit more fun to not have bullet drop, or at least reduce the amount of bullet drop it has. So an easy way of doing that, selecting the projectile movement, searching for gravity, and changing the projectile gravity scale to be zero. If you don't want it to be zero, you just want less of a bullet drop, you can just put it from anywhere between zero and one, just make it less than one, and it will then give you a less severe bullet drop, like so. So we'll hit compile, save, and now we can close this, and this should be everything set up working perfectly for us. So let's hit play, test this out. As you can see, I've disabled the enemy spawners just to show you this working, but we can move about normally like so, working perfectly, no change there, but then if we were to aim, so I hold down right click, you can see we can now aim up and aim down based on which way the player is looking with their mouse. And again, this is going to work, and if we were to look up towards where these enemies are and shoot, we should be able to hit them. And obviously, I can't really see them all that well because of my character, but we are going to actually be aiming up. Let's see if I can get them. As you can see there, I'm hitting them and can't really see where I'm shooting, so you might want to mess about with that a little bit differently. But this is just how I've got it set up quickly, and again, today we're going over the aim offset itself, not actually looking where we're aiming. So this is working perfectly for me. So I think that'll be it for this video, it's we've done everything we want to do. We've set up an aim offset which allows us to aim up and down, and the bullet will also follow where the gun is looking. So if we're looking up, the bullet will also be shot up, so we can get enemies up above us, or even down below us as well if we wanted. So then we can look up and down like this. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.